Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson, and in this video, we're going to review the metadata activity within Azure Data Factory. There's really about three things I want to cover here. The first one is obviously going to be set up in configuration. The next one is going to be different scenarios on where you can use and leverage the metadata activity. And then the third, probably the most important, so saving that one for last, how do we essentially read the outputs from that activity and then use it as an input for other activities. And so that'll be the third thing and the final thing that we take a look at here in this video. And then this will be the first in really a series of videos that I'm going to be doing on Azure Data Factory. Now, let's jump right in. The first thing that we're going to do is create a pipeline. You see that I already have Azure Data Factory opened up on my computer. And if I zoom in here, I can go ahead and create a new pipeline. And that's where we're going to get started. So we'll create a new pipeline that's going to open up. If you are unfamiliar with Data Factory, a pipeline is essentially a package in SSIS. So there's a very strong correlation there that you can kind of uh, familiarize yourself with. I'm going to give the pipeline a name and I'm going to give it a pretty good name as far as how it fits into this series of videos that I'm doing. And I'm going to call this one the first video metadata activity. I guess first video is not correct and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to pull in the metadata activity and then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to bring in from the general category one of the current activities and the one that we want here is get metadata activity. So all you do is just drag that right into the screen. Now in order to use this activity we need to create a linked service which is essentially a connection manager if you think back to your kind of BI days with SQL Server. A linked service is a connection manager and we need to create a data set. A data set is more specific right like a linked connection or a linked, linked service rather that would be a connection to a database, but a data set's a connection to a table. A link service is a connection to your blob storage account. A data set is a connection to an individual file. So we have to have a link service and then the data set. So what I can do is under data sets, I'm going to click on the little ellipsis right there and choose new data set. And from this window right here, I'm going to create both the data set and the linked service. You'll see there's lots of different options available. This is going to be directly to my Azure Blob Storage account. So I'll grab that guy, click continue. It's going to be a delimited text file. Click continue again. And then I want to give this a good name. Now, I don't remember ever seeing any naming conventions coming out for Azure Data Factory. And so maybe that's going to be one of the videos that I end up doing here. But I like to give these very explicit names. So it's in Azure. This is an Azure data set. It's connecting to an Azure resource. So I start with AZ. And then I'm going to say, you know, really this is ADLS account and it's going to be a file. It's not a directory. It's not a table. It is going to be very specifically a file. And then I'm going to say the name of the file is employee. So I give it a really good name and then I have to choose my linked service. Notice that for the linked service, I don't have any set up and created yet in this data factory. So I'm going to click new. It's going to pop up a new one. You see that it automatically recognizes we want Azure blob storage. So I'm going to come down here and I'll give this guy a name. So this will be Azure and then I'll give it a name of blob. And then I really want to call this whatever my blob storage account is called. And so I want to name that the same thing over here on the other screen. I have that open. So I'm going to grab my storage account and make sure I give it the exact name of that storage account. Essentially, you'll have a different linked service. You'll have a different connection for each one of your storage accounts. And so let me grab real quick in my resource group and it's opening up right now and I named it Mitchell Pearson of course so the storage account name we're going to grab here I want to give it a name of I could have looked that up right there Mitchell Pearson and then down here at the bottom I'm going to choose my Azure subscription we'll go with that storage account name that is going to be Mitchell Pearson all right and that's it that's all we need to do on this screen right here we need a test connection make sure that works uh, we are going to use our account key. That is perfect. We click create. Now that's going to create the link service. That is the connection manager. Uh, and now we have to finish creating, if you will, the actual data set. So this is the name of the data set. This is the link service we're going to use to uh, get to, you know, wherever that, that file or directory is we want to connect to. And then right here, we specify that exact file path. So I'm going to do browse. It's going to take me to my YouTube container. I'll click on that guy right there. And then I'm going to grab this very simple text file. Very simple text file has two columns, two rows of data. And then I want to tell it that the first row is a header. So that's good. And then I'll take the schema 
the metadata information about the file directly from the connection that we are creating. And then we click OK, right? So once that's done, once that's done, it'll open up a new tab here. This tab has the, uh, this is our, this one right here. This is our data set. This is our metadata activity. We'll publish these and save these to Data Factory here shortly. But what we want to do is over here, we're going to bring the Git metadata activity in, which I thought we already did, and we did. And then all we have to do to configure this, and this is a very easy and simple process, is we click on data set. And then under data set, we're going to point to our data set. You notice there's a little red one right there. What that red one means is that this is a required item. So we have to provide the data set. And that's really the only one we have. And then once you give it that, you have some other parameters here. But this is the part I want to show you, not any of these. I want to show you the field list. If I click new, and I'm going to click new about seven or eight times here, then you can choose from different items of what you want to return. And so from that file that we're connecting to, the get metadata activity can return, for example, the column count. So how many columns is it? We can return the MD5, that hash algorithm. We can return that. We can return, whoops, wrong one. We can check to see if the file exists, right? Maybe this is a file that gets deleted and recreated every day. So first we want to check if it exists before we process the file. We can do that. We're going to come in here and let me see if we can zoom down a little bit more and get some other stuff. We're going to grab the item name. We don't need it for this one because we're specifying it. But in the one that I'm going to do here in a minute, uh, that'll make a lot more sense. And so let's see if we can scroll down maybe a little bit more here. And we can't. So not a great experience for that, I guess. So we have exist. We've already gotten exist once. Let's see if there's anything else we can get. So we can get size. And then the last thing I'm going to grab here is structure. There we go. Now I had an extra one, an extra field I added I don't need. We'll delete it. And that's it. So I'm walking you through the video very quickly here. Uh, now, once you've done that, all you do is run it in testing, right? So we're going to debug this. Now there's a couple reasons why we debug it. One, we want to make sure that we set it up and configured it correctly. Two, this is the most important part, being able to actually see what those output parameters are so we can reference them and also what those output values are. Now, whenever you run something in debug, not running it from a scheduled trigger, which is like a scheduled job, whenever you run it in debug, it's going to show up down here at the bottom. And you'll notice that when I hover over the different activities within my pipeline, we only have one, each activity would have the same behavior. I can see that this activity took two seconds and I have an input and I have an output. I'm going to click on the output. And under output, you'll notice that these are the different outputs. Content MD5, exist, true. Item name, input, imp.txt. Item type, file. The size, and then you see the structure. The structure looks like this. It recognizes it as a single column. It's a file. It doesn't recognize the column delimiter right now. We would handle that later when we load the data. So it only recognizes a single column. Now. Why do I show you this? Because when you run this in debug, you will get to see these outputs. And in the next video that I do, maybe not the next one you watch, is going to be the stored procedure. And I'm going to show you how to take these values and pass them into the stored procedure if that's something that you're unfamiliar with. But we have all of this data, including the last time that, that file was modified. Now, that's the first example that I wanted to show you. That's connecting directly to a file. The next example I wanted to show you was connecting to a folder. Now this is very valuable, right? Because when you connect to a folder, you can see all the child items and get a list of all the files in that folder. And so it returns an array that has all the files in it. Now think of what you can do with that. You can filter it down, grab only the files that you need, and then process those files. And so this is a very, very important capability um, that we get with the Git metadata activity. So what do we need to do? Well, first we need to create another data set but this one is going to be one that points to a directory location in our blob storage account, not to a specific file. So over here under data sets, I am going to create a, another, whoop, wrong one. I'm going to create another data set here. We'll call it new data set. That's going to show up over here on the right, Azure blob storage again. And then I'll go, I'm going to have to zoom out, click continue, delimited text, click continue. And then I'll zoom back in. So let's give this a name. This will be very quick. We're going to call this one Azure. It's also going to be ADLS. This is going to be a directory or a folder, right? And then we're going to give it the name of the folder we're connecting to, which I believe is called YouTube. We're not going to go look. 
I'm pretty sure that's what it was. We just looked at it a minute ago, I should remember. And now we don't have to create our link service though. Remember, a data set is more granular, it's more detailed. The link service gets us connected to that Azure data lake or gets us connected to that database. But then we can choose with our data set different files, different folders, different tables if we're looking at a database. So we can reuse that link service, which remember is like a connection manager. And then I'm gonna tell it, you know, the first row as header, yeah, that doesn't matter. But what I do wanna do is I wanna to point to just the directory location. So this time I'm gonna stop at the folder. I'm not gonna drill down further and grab an individual file. I'm just going to grab the entire folder and I'll click okay. And then I can do first row as header if I want, not a big deal. Click okay again. And let's take a look. So we have a, another data set that's been created. We have a tab open. We can't close these tabs until we go ahead and publish everything, right? So publish is your save. And over here under metadata activity, uh, I'm gonna create a new pipeline for this one. So we'll create a new pipeline because in the next video, we're gonna come back to pipeline number one and we'll give this guy a name. This will be two. And then we'll say, you know, metadata activity. And I almost spelled that correctly. Bear with me here. There we go. Metadata activity. I'm gonna go over here to general. We'll bring it in again and you remember how quickly uh, this goes by because once we grab that metadata activity and we do select, we can come into our data set and we are going to grab the one we just created, which was a folder. Now, here's what I want to show you here. When you choose different types of data sets, be it a file, be it a directory location, be it a database, uh, a table in a database rather, you're going to actually get a different set of what's available within that field list. So when I come down here and I start clicking new, 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 and I'm gonna add a couple extra so I can scroll down further and see the list a little bit better, you'll see I can get child items. That was not available before. This is a list of everything that's in that directory location. So we'll do child items. Uh, we'll do exist is kind of silly since it's bringing back the child items. Of course it exists, but we'll bring that back. Um, we can do item name. We can do, you know, the folder hopefully exists. And then let me see, was there something else? There was last modified. All right. So we have the child items, which is really what I'm most curious about here. And then exist item name and last modified. Now later, what we'll do is we'll take a look at how to loop over those items that are right and do different operations to that list. So let's go ahead and delete those extra fields that I brought in that we don't need. We'll get rid of those guys. And then that's set up. That's ready to go. So we are once again going to click debug. Debug runs very quick. This is where you can, so debug, while this is running, what it does is it runs it, any changes that you've made inside the pipeline, that's what gets run. So even though you're debugging and what you're developing might be out of sync with what you've published up to Data Factory, you're running the most recent code that's inside of the pipeline you're developing. Whereas if you were to run this from the Data Factory, you'd be running what has been published. And so debug gives you that capability. When we come down here to the bottom, we see that it took two seconds to run. And if we click on the output, it says that the folder exists. The item name was YouTube. That's the name of the folder, the last modified. And here are the child items, right? Now this array is a single value because I only have one file right now in that directory location. But that's it, input imp, it's a file. It tells me the type. And so you can go down the list and get some other information as far as what integration runtime did you use? That's the compute and some other information here as well. Now, we'll talk more in detail on some of those topics in some later videos, but for now, I wanna get through this activity pretty quickly. The other pipeline that we're about to create is actually gonna be connecting to a table in a database. So I wanted to give you a couple of different options here. The way that I do that, once again, I'm gonna create a data set very quickly here. And that might require that I go over there and grab my server name but it looks like I got it on the screen, so we're good to go. And so I'm gonna go in here and grab Azure SQL Database and click Connect. So we're creating a new database, a new data set. Once again, I like to give these very intuitive names, right? So this is gonna be called Azure. It's gonna be called SQL because it's a SQL database in Azure. Um, it is gonna be a table. I'm not worried about table here because most of the time when it's an Azure SQL database, it's gonna be a table. So now I just wanna give it the name of the table that I'm connecting to, which is gonna be you know, my table because I don't remember the table name right now. So we'll go with my table 
I think it was YouTube video list. Yeah, we'll go with it. We'll see what, what happens here. We'll, it will be a surprise. But notice we don't have a link service. So we're going to create a new link service real quick. We're going to connect to that database. So this will be called Azure and then SQL and then the name of the database because this is the link service. And so the name of the database that I have is, let's see here, what did I call this thing? PW. I found it. Mitchell Pearson. I just created these right before I started reviewing this video. Oh, that's right. We got to go underscore on that. All right. We give it a description. You give it your runtime. Uh, I'm going to connect directly to Azure subscription. I'll go with my Microsoft Azure subscription here. I can grab from that my server name, PW, Pragmatic Works, dash Mitchell Pearson. Database name is going to be Mitchell Pearson dash YouTube. There you go. SQL authentication. So I'm going to type in my admin user for username, and then I'll put in a very generic password here. There we go. Test connection down here at the very bottom right. We'll give that a moment. It says it succeeded. So we click create. Now the benefit of clicking create here is that we now have that link service, that connection manager. So anytime we need to reference that, we can use that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use this. There it is. YouTube channel. So I'm going to grab that table name called YouTube channel, and then we'll rename the data set correctly. So I'm giving it the name of the actual table because remember the data set is at the more granular level. And then once we've selected that, we're going to do okay. We're going to click okay. All right. So we've created our data set just like before. What are we going to do next? We're going to create a new pipeline. So I'm going to create a new pipeline here and then I will grab general. We're going to grab the metadata activity. I'm going to click in the background. Let's go ahead and give this pipeline a name so we don't forget. And we'll call this three uh, metadata activity. And then we're going to set this up real quick. Just like before, the only required parameter here is going to be the name of the data set. So we'll grab our SQL database data set. And then I'll add a couple of lists here. Now, when you connect to a table, there's not really a lot of metadata options. In fact, all you see is column count, does the table exist, and structure. And so if I grab column count, that'll be fine. And then the last thing I'll grab here for this example will be the structure of that data set. Now, that's been set up. It's been configured. We're going to go ahead and debug this work. So I'll click on debug right here. And that should load pretty quickly. Uh, it's going to run. It's going to take a look at that table and it's going to bring back the structure, which is the metadata. It's going to bring back the names of the columns, the data types of the columns and all of that good information it should be done. We'll click refresh down here at the bottom and it is. And so I refreshed it right here. Sometimes it'll look like it's still running, even though it's complete. And then I'm going to look at the output again, this output button right here. I cannot emphasize how important it is for just being able to debug and get information. And so we have the structure. And it tells me my first column name is ID. So that's the physical name ID. And then it tells me some other information. What type of data type is it? You go down. We got another column name, the video category. So that's the category of the video that I have on YouTube. Then we go down again and I have the video title. And then I have the video link and then the date that it was published. Now, I just created this table. It's not a real table per se. It has like four rows in it for my massive growing library of YouTube videos. Um, but it shows how we can go and get metadata information, right? And so then from here, we could obviously do something with that information. All right. The only thing we need to do from there is click publish all. And I want to make sure I publish everything here. You'll see it say all of this is new. Sounds good to me. We publish that we save it. So it's good to go next time. This is um, how you use the get metadata activity. What I want to show you in the future is other things like how do we loop over that list? How do we run stored procedures? How do we use the outputs of those parameters? And so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative, hopefully quick and didn't take up too much of your time. And I'll see you in the next video.